This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning hub with over 25,000 courses. They got courses on anything from game development, art, animation, and many, many other things. And on the topic of animation, if you want to continue your journey in learning pixel art animation, and in this particular case, particle explosions, Simon over on Skillshare has a course for you to check out. With a Skillshare membership, you get unlimited access to all their classes for less than $10 a month. And if you use the link in the description right now, you'll get two months for free. Hey everybody, today I want to show you a really neat software that I came across recently. It's a software that can export out real Game Boy games, so you can actually play these games on the real hardware. And not only that, it's a really cool challenge if you want to try and work with some awesome limits. So yeah, stick around if you want to learn more about this. All right, so the first thing we gotta do in order to get this software is head over to gpstudio.dev. I'll obviously put a link in the description for you to check out. Over here, you can download the software for your current system. And if you need it for a different system, you can click on more downloads to find the system that fits yours. Once you've downloaded it, you extract the file and open up the setup file, and it will start installing GB Studio on your device. And that's all we needed to do to install GB Studio. Now let's create our first little project here. So I'm going to call my game here for video tutorial. Down here you can see we only have two templates, a blank and a sample project. For this video I'm going to use the sample project for us to see a little bit what GB Studio can do. If you want to change where the game is saved on your computer, you can change the folders down here. But I'm all good with this, so let's just get started. Great. Alright, so here we can see the sample project for the first time and there's a lot of things going on here. So let's just quickly go over what is happening here so we can get an idea of how GB Studio works. There is essentially three things to GB Studio. An actor, a trigger and a scene. One of these maps here is a scene. This is the environment your player will walk around in. Or a menu or whatever you want to make a scene to be. Inside the scene, you can see we have these red blocks here. That's a collision. That's what the player will walk into and stop the player. You can create a collision by clicking this button over here and then just start drawing your collision onto the map. Left click will draw and if you left click on top of a collision, it will start erasing that collision. Everything is locked to an 8x8 grid, but we'll get more into that in a bit. Another thing with a scene is that if we click on this scene here, you can see this bar over to the right changes and we can see all the things we have in our scene. We can click on one of these to get more information about them. And if we want to add a piece of script to the screen, you can add it down here. This is also where you can change the name of your scene and what image you want to use. This will cover in a bit as well. Now let's take a look at an actor and this is an active object like an NPC, a sign or anything the player should be able to interact with or that should have some kind of motion in your game. Let's click on this dude here. Here you can give the actor a name for this specific scene. This is nice if you want to keep order of your actors in all the scenes. We can change what sprite we want to use. This will cover in a bit as well. We can change the direction we want the actor to be looking. And if we want him to wander around randomly, we can also change his movement speed here. And if there's a lot of things going on in the scene, you can add a node to a specific actor where you can write something that might be good for you in the future to keep track of what's happening. Now if we scroll down here, you can see the action script that we have added to this actor. And whenever you interact with this actor, this script will play. We'll cover this in a little bit as well. Now let's talk about triggers, and you can see we have two triggers in this scene, one here on the door, and one here on the cave. These will trigger automatically when you walk into them. So let's click on this one, and you can see when you walk into this one, it switches to the scene called Cave, and it places the player at the position 9 and 15. And the player direction will be up when it enters the next screen, and the fading speed is 2. You can see when we have a switch screen action here, you can see these blue lines appears, and they basically show the next screen that the player will go to. On the trigger, you can say it says 9 and 15, which is this position here, but you can also change this dynamically by moving this blue thing around. And you can see from the cave, there's a trigger that goes back out here. And same with that, we can move the position around dynamically. So that's a little bit of the basic of the few mechanics that is to GB Studio. Now let's go a little deeper into all this and how everything works. But I'm going to remove everything here except for our title screen and our logo. And then we'll run through some of the basic stuff for you to get started to make your own game. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go up here to the right. You can see there's a little folder icon. When we click on this, 
you can see that it opens up our project folder. So if we click here on assets, you can see this is basically everything our game contains right now. As you can see, the backgrounds here are basically the scenes. So there's no map editor in GB Studio, but you basically just save every map as an image. This can be a good starting point if you want something to work from. But in my case, I'm just going to delete everything except for the logo and the title screen. The backgrounds here were our maps, and then music is obviously any music that the game may contain. Sprites is where we have all our playable actors and NPCs. And these are a little important and I want to cover them in a little bit. Because they need to be set up in a certain way in order to work in GB Studio. And last here we have the UI, which is all the interface in your game. If you're less experienced, I would say don't worry about this, this is all good for now. And if you really want to dig into the UI of GB Studio, there is also a documentation page on the website where you can read more about how everything functions. So before we start creating anything for our game, I just quickly want to show how I manage my project. Because GB Studio is so limited, you won't have a bunch of sprites and maps. So I usually contain everything in a single image like this. And then once I want to export it, I simply want it to copy it, create a new file, paste it in there and export it. But for now, I just wanted to mention that you can contain everything in a single image in Asprite, or whatever art software that you're using. And if you're running out of space, simply go up and extend your canvas and just make it bigger. So the first thing I want to create for my game is a map. So something like the house here, perhaps. The thing with GP Studio is that it requires to use certain colors in order to function on a real Game Boy. You can download the colors here for Photoshop or Asprite. And if you're using a different software, you can also find the color codes here. It's also important that your map is minimum 160 by 144 or at maximum 256 by 256. If you go over these limits, it won't work on the Game Boy either. And it also says here it can contain more than 192 unique 8x8 tiles at once due to the memory limit. And that is the tricky part, but also the really fun part about GP Studio. So to kind of showcase what that means, if we take this scene here, I'll copy this into a new file, paste it in, turn on my grid. So you can see here on this map, I'm trying to reuse the same tiles as much as possible. So for example, on the carpet here, all these tiles right here is the same. So this just accounts for one tile. Now the couch itself is a little bit different and it has a lot of unique tiles as you can see. In fact, I don't think there's anything that can be copy pasted here except for the middle part to extend the couch. So these are three unique tiles, but because I copy them over like this, they stay as a single tile and won't count more for three tiles even though there are nine tiles here. So in other words, you can only have 192 unique tiles. So you can see that's why there's a lot of repetition in some of my maps is to try and keep the tile limit as low as possible. On a small scene like the house here, it's not as much as an issue as it can start to be on a bigger scene here. So if you do want to have a very complex looking scene, I would suggest go with a small scene. And if you need something that is okay having a lot of repetition in it, you can work with a bigger screen. But that's just my suggestion. It's nothing you have to work with. Anyhow, let's take this scene here and export it into GB Studio. So you want to save the scene inside the background folder and you want to make sure that it's a PNG and name the file something that you can remember. So I'll call this one for house. And once that is exported, you simply go back into GB Studio, press the little add button here, select a scene and click somewhere. You know, I'm not 100% sure, but I do think that it always exports in the latest scene that you put into their folder, but I might be mistaken. If you're getting a different scene, all you have to do is go over here to the background and select the name of the image that you exported. And I'll call this map for house. All right, so the next thing I want to do now is to add a collision. So if we take our player here and places him in this map and try and play the game, you can see that the player can run over everything because we have no collision in there. So let's add a collision now. Like I mentioned earlier, it's this little Lego block over here. You press on it and you just start painting where you want the collision to be. And you can now see when I play the map, the player is unable to walk through any of all these walls here. But my character here is not really themed Animal Crossing like everything else I've made. So let's try and import one of my Animal Crossing sprites. You can see how the process of importing a sprite is. 
All right, so back over here on the documentation page, you can read all about the limits that the sprites need to contain within and what types of sprites that you can add. I'll obviously go over this, but if you want to read more about it, the page is here for you to find. Like the background, we need to work within a certain color limit, but this time it's a little bit different because we actually only have three colors and this last green color here is our transparent color. If that is a little bit confusing, don't worry about it. Just draw your sprite with these colors. And once you're done drawing your sprite, simply select the whole sprite, take the green color and use your filling tool to fill out everything that's transparent. But now let's take a look at the four types of sprites that you can add. If you're importing an active sprite that does need any animation, you can keep it a single 16 by 16 image. For an example, in my game, I have a mailbox. It doesn't need any animation, so I can just contain it a single image like this. If you want a looping animation, you can simply have a sprite sheet where you just have all the frames in a long row. This can be anything between two to 25 frames. Here is the example of the fire. The next two I want to talk about is an actor and an animated actor, because they're somewhat the same, but then again, they're not really. Your player has to be an animated actor but an NPC can be both an animated and just a normal actor. The difference between these two is that an animated actor can walk around where a actor just stands still, but can still look in all directions. Well, the animated actor can walk in all the direction and are not bound to the position that it's placed on. That doesn't mean you can move any of the other actors around, but an animated actor just works well for an NPC that needs to be walking around or anything like that. You can see that our axis here is only looking down, up and right. But in the game, when it's facing left, it's simply just mirroring the right animation. And same here with the walking animation. It contains two frames for walking down, two frames for walking up and two frames for walking right. And if you were to walk left, it's simply just mirroring this right animation here. So in all, you only have six frames to work with for your sprite, which is very limited, but also very fun to try and pull off. So I'm going to use my Animal Crossing dude here that I made but you can modify the sprite that the games come with, or you can draw your own from scratch, as long as you're just staying within the limits that GB Studio tells you to stay within. I'm gonna take this bright green color here, which is the transparent, turn continuous off, and use my bucket tool to fill it up. Copy this, control in for new file, paste it in, export it out. And this one is not going to be saved within our background, but it's rather going to be saved within our sprites. So I'll save it here. And I'll call this one for male player export. So in order to import an actor, you would think you would go up here, select actor and place him in and change it to the male player. But this is now an NPC. This is what you would do if you were to make a NPC walk around in your screen. But I want to change the player into this sprite. I can do that by click somewhere out here in the open space. And you can see I have all the information for my project over here to the right. Right here it says play a sprite sheet. I'll change that into my male player. Now I don't want this NPC to be here so let's remove him and try and play. All right and you can now see I am the little Animal Crossing guy dude that I made in a sprite. Now let's try and add a little NPC just to see the process of that. I'm going to take Isabel here and do the same thing. Copy new file, paste in, export, select here, call this one for npc underscore isa, export. I'm going back in here, going to take this piranha plant that I made, copy, paste, export, call this one for npc plant. And let's take the gyro here as a last sprite, copy, new file, paste in, export, npc underscore gyro. Now when we head back into GB Studio, if I press the add button here and take actor, I should now be able to place down an actor and you can see I can change them here. So let's change it to the NPC plant, which is two frames, place it here, select animate by cycling frames and try and press play. You can now see that is doing its animation here. Let's add another actor. This one is going to be Isa, which is Isabel. You can see here it has a movement type. It's currently static, which means she's standing still, but I can change this to walk randomly around or walk in different ways. I'll take random walk for now. You can see she's now walking around randomly like this. Nothing really happens if I go up and talk to any of these or press on them. So let's try and make Isabel say something. If I press here on Isabel, 
You can see down here on the right, it says add an event. I'm just going to add a talking event, but this is basically where you add all the types of events that an actor can do once you interact with it. You can see there is quite a lot you can do. I'm just going to take text and display dialogue. Say, hello, play. You can now see if I go up and interact with Isabel, she says hello. If you wanted her to do more things after saying hello, you would just add a new event and you can add them all here. Now let's add our last NPC, which was the gyro. It also has an animation. So I'm going to animate by cycle frames. Let's try and make this one really fast. We'll actually slow the piranha plant down a little bit. And we'll make him save the game once interacting, so add event. And we'll type up in the search field, save game data. Now let's also add a little text box here, just to make sure that the player knows that we've saved the game. So we'll just write save game. You can obviously make this way more complex and different if you wanted to, but I'm just going to keep it like this for now. Let's try and play it out. Now you can see he's wiggling his little arm up here like crazy. And the piranha plant is moving a little slower. But if, it, if I interact with him now, my game is now saved. Now this is really cool and all, and we can walk around in this house. But I kind of want you to be able to walk out of the house and back into the house. And that way we also get to play around with the triggers here. In order to make us able to walk to a different map, we first have to export the other map that we want to be able to walk into. So I'm just going to select this map real quick. Copy. New file. Paste. Export. Go into the backgrounds layer. Call this one for town. And export. Now I can simply just add in a new scene. Place it here. And that is our town. Let's name it town real quick. I'm just quickly going to fill it out with collisions. All right, now that we made the collision here for the little town, let's add a trigger. And this one you have to drag when you place, because the trigger can be any size, really. I'm just going to fill it out right here for the door. And I'm going to add another trigger and fill it out here as well. Now when we interact with this trigger here, I'm going to add an event called switch screen. And you can see it automatically place this blue cylinder here. I'm just going to place it down here. And same with this trigger here. Select it. Add event. Switch screen. And I'm going to take this cylinder here and drag over here. And make sure that the direction is set to up. Let's try and play this. And you can now see when I walk out here, I enter the town. And when I walk into the house again, I enter the house. Now it's kind of weird that Isabel and the gyro is in here, so let's put Isabel up here. And let's put the gyro out here next to the house. Hit play. You can now see the gyro is still going ham out here. Save game. And we can still go up here and talk to Isabel. Alright, and after some time here I spent with the project, you can now see I made a little demo here. I'll make this available for you to download in the description as well to play and test out if you want to. But before I end the video, I also want to mention that you should definitely check out the GP Studio Discord if you are in need of any help. There's a bunch of people talking, sharing tips and helping each other out in there. And one last thing I want to show here before I go is just showcase a few things that people have made with GP Studio. And last of all, I want to ask the question, why should you even use GP Studio? Well, one thing, it's cool that you can export it out and play it on the real hardware, and it's very easy to use. Another thing that I think is really cool about this is that I already made a video called Learn With Limits, and in that video I pretty much talk about how you get a lot more creative by putting a lot of limits on yourself. So if you really want to challenge and put yourself to the test, I would highly suggest trying and work with this software. You don't even have to make anything big, just a small little demo like I've made. It really gets the creativity flowing in you. And again, it's pretty cool that you can play this on a real Game Boy. But yeah, with that said, thank you so much for watching everybody. If you like what you saw, make sure to give the video a like. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. Remember, there is a two months three Skillshare link in the description. And with that said, I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.